Stumpers, what is going on? We are back for the chaos that is foot stuff. We are here with Tiago, our South American correspondent, but he's actually Canadian. We're here with Perry, probably the most dedicated of foot stuff. He does homework. He does that shit consistently, always focused. And obviously, we got the cavity man. He's back. Ricky C. Ricky, how are you doing today? I need a new nickname. I'm the mayor, okay? The mayor. But I'm pretty, I'm pretty, I'm pretty upset because like there's really dumb men out there and Shakira is a fucking dime and PK just fucking left her hanging. And you know, like why why is this man gotta cheat on Shakira, man? That's all I gotta ask. That's all I gotta ask. I've always been about equal rights. I've always stood on that same thing, and hence why Waka Waka is, is one of my favorite tracks. That's why I've always <laughs> Ricardo, don't dance. We can't hear the music you're playing, you fucking cringy fuck. Um, <laughs> the stuff for today, we're going to be talking about some controversial shit. This episode's going to be, hopefully we don't get canceled. Then we're going to do some nation Nations League review. Look at our score predictions. Thiago wants participation points for his score predictions that weren't right, but he's, he was close. Uh, we're going to do some transfer news stuff, which Thiago's going to lead with, and then Mr. Focus himself has some pl- this player or this player for us. Uh, Rick, get us into the controversy. You're the mayor. Bring us bring us down a good path. Yeah, so uh, Canada basically went on strike and they uh, boycotted the, the Panama friendly that they were supposed to have. They're supposed to play the next one against um, Curacao, I believe. But uh, basically the whole thing is Canadian players are asking for a lot. They uh, They want female soccer players to receive the same wages per match. They want 75% of the World Cup prize money to be divided by women's and men's Canada national team. And they also want the development of a women's domestic league. Um, just a, a breakdown of the prize money. The prize money for group stage, if you lose in the group stage, which is most, most likely what's going to happen with uh, Canada, they the get win. $9 million. No, this this for the Qatar World Cup. Right, right. Okay. Nine mil if you get eliminated. Okay. Yeah. And then 13 million if you lose in the round of 16. Um, Jeez. Yeah. So they're basically asking for this to be divided by both men and women. And uh, my opinion oh, who's asking is asking for this. Is it, this is like the players. This is the, the actual the guy players want that? Yeah. The men. Yeah. yeah. The men want yeah. to do that. Oh, my God. Yeah. Wait, wait. I, uh, <laughs> I, 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 I don't. <sighs> I almost feel like this has happened before. I think Ghana, when they went to Brazil, right? I oh. think they had like a little dispute about over money, over wages yeah. and contract negotiations. Yeah, um, no. You want me to let you know? You want me to remind you of that? Because uh, I definitely remember that. That shit pissed yeah. me off. Like, yo, let, let, me just, let me just finish what I was thinking. I, feel, I almost feel like they're using the women's side as a way, just as a crutch to make themselves look like the good guys. I don't know. It's a... Uh, Unpopular opinion, but yeah. What happened with Ghana, Perry, before we, uh, we all weigh in and not get canceled? <laughs> <laughs> no, yo, that one um, had nothing to do with trying to split that with, like, uh, women or anything like that. That was just because the Ghanaian FA um, was withholding their their money, right? Um, and, and what the players just wanted. The players just wanted – obviously, you, you want your money. Even though it's international – you are still a professional, right? So um, these FAs are given money for being in, in uh, these tournaments, right? So they just wanted their money. And then the Ghanaian FA, bunch of fucking idiots, fucking sent the money on a plane to Brazil. The money was taxed while going over to Brazil. And like, so the players ended up getting less money than what they were supposed to get. Because our FA is just, you know, our, the Ghanaian FA is just a bunch of idiots that run that shit, man. And so that became um, uh, like a distraction, a massive issue within the squad. And um, that was also the same year. Even Ghana and, and Portugal were in the same group, right? With Germany, too, in the yeah. U.S., I believe. That was that group, yeah. right? So idiotic. So idiotic. So slightly different than what... Um, uh, Rick saying here, but yeah. uh, I do commend the guys uh, uh, for thinking that, like, you know, kind of wanting to ensure that the money's 
spread out not only between the men and the women but also like gra uh, grassroots uh, soccer and all of that right to develop uh, players throughout the country that that I can you know go for you know what I mean so uh, I do commend the, the the guys for for wanting to do this before we get into Mr. Bigot himself Rick you, you, I, th I think you made you made a great point is like these types of like protests and stuff have happened before. And I, I commend Ghana for doing the one they did yeah. because they have the stage at that point. They knew the Ghana FA was going to have to put up or shut up. Right. They knew at that point you have them by the balls. It's, it's yeah. on the FA at that point. This is now like equal pay, equal rights. This is like a little of sorry, a very different combo. And Tiago. I know you have a very, very strong opinion on this. So just keep in mind, we have whatever, five listeners or 5,000. Keep it like PG. The U.S. national team has already done this. I've already done this. So men and women are being paid equally. What is your opinion on this? Uh, no, my opinion, I, I, I feel like, I don't know, I, there's no way. Like for me, I just believe that it's pay should be based on what you bring in. And... Women's soccer, like I was looking at the stats for the viewers, like men's World Cup and women's World Cup. Yeah. So the total views, <laughs> you're dying, eh? Oh man, the total views of the World Cup for men, the last one was 3.7 billion total views and everything. And the women's got seven, 700 million, which is not bad, but still, like, I don't see anybody rocking women's jerseys. Like, you gotta, you gotta bring in revenue to, to be making that money after earning, it, right? Like, that uh, the American woman are that uh, I think it's their best player. One of the best players were Pini. She was saying, uh, you know, why can Messi, if I'm, if I win the Ballon d'Or, why do I have to make less than Messi and Ronaldo? Like, but that's a pretty dumb question because sponsorships, all these pretty big things that bring in revenue. It's not there for women's soccer and not to like, let's, if you put, you know, the women before they won the world cup, the States, USA, they played under 15 FC Dallas boys. And they, I think they got crushed five. I think it was five, one, I believe. I, I just, I, I don't see why they deserve equal pay. Like, yeah, it's, they should promote it more and try to get it up there, but just, I don't, I don't think they deserve equal pay right now. Right, go ahead. I, I do like that the men are doing this though. Like uh, apparently the initial offer for team Canada was, um, 10% of the winnings was going to the men's national team. That's what the Association of Canada offered. And then Canada made a biggest big deal. And then they asked for 75%. And now I think on the table is 60% to be divided 30% for women's, 30% for, for men's. So I have, I have a spin zone on this. When I say spin zone, it's a different way of looking at it. I think the Canadian and U.S. men's national teams are cucky in this situation. So when I say this... Follow, follow me. Of the of the men's and, and women's for both of uh, Canada and U.S., what has the better opportunity at winning the World Cup? It would be the U.S. and Canadian women's. So all the men are doing is looking for a piece of that. They're looking for equal distribution. And I know what the Footstuff group chat has said, and it's very true. Europe's going to be very slow to be doing this. Very slow. They're, they're not going to be jumping in. The, most European nations... Most South American nations aren't, but in North America, I like the idea that these men's teams are doing it for the grassroots. I'm really down for that. I, and I know Perry is, I think we all are. That's how you build it up. But the men are being heroes in all this. If anything, the women are. The women are the ones making money at these tournaments in for Team Canada and Team USA. Do you guys understand what I'm saying here? Yeah. I, because I, they've I, been in yeah. it more, right? Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. just it. I, but I feel like, I feel like, let's say women's US women's U.S. win the World Cup <laughs> if they, like, they won the last one, but they win it again, and the U.S. men get eliminated in the group stage, I think U.S. men still bring in more revenue than the women winning the World Cup. I don't think so. I could be wrong. No, I, I don't. I know. I, I am wrong. I just felt like saying that. <laughs> but you, you <laughs> still... <laughs> no, but I, I know what you're saying. Yeah. And in the end... No, but it's crazy, man. Like, views and jersey sales, uh, sure. um, especially, like, uh, sports cards or or memorabilia, all the stuff that you see that's valued higher is the men's soccer, right? Not not disrespect, not being disrespectful to women's soccer, but like so much more revenue in different aspects of the sport that go for the men that 
women there's it's not existing yet but in in a way that's what these men these canadian men and women are trying to change is basically the the views of women in sports they want to better that so people can watch it more and that's what's going on in wnba i think that wnba is being a lot more televised now yep. women tennis is being well it's always been televised women tennis but but it's that's what they want to do they just want to get that part of the sport out there for females to you know i, I, I find it hilarious and I, i'm not gonna i'm not gonna dig my own grave here i find it hilarious though that we're looking for equality in gender in, in sports where both genders play in but I, as you guys know, I watch a lot of sports, probably too many sports for my own brain. But in the NBA, which the NBA finals happened tonight, we'll get predictions from all of us. The NFL, these sports are looking for equality for race. There's a, there's a race issue with especially people in positions of power, like coaching, uh, front offices, et cetera. And then in soccer, for some reason, we're doing this fucking weird pivot for like gender equality when there's still racial shit happening. You know, there's still like it, it just feels like we're skipping, we're like skipping the line here. And I, I guess all issues are being brought to the forefront. Like I said, I'm not going to bury myself. I know Woke Nation, if anybody, anybody part of Woke Nation listens to this, they'll crucify me. And that's totally cool. I just feel like there are really big issues at the forefront. And we're like, we're pivoting past those. Does that make sense? Yeah. Whatever, whatever happens, I just hope this gets resolved really quick. Cause like, if this is an issue by November, I think. Kind of the soccer could be a lot better without these issues sure. around. Yeah, I hope they don't do what Ghana did and have to protest at the biggest stage in the world. I don't want it to get there. I agree with you, Ricardo. It'd be good for Canadian men's soccer finally making an appearance in my lifetime, like fucking get shit organized, right? Um, yeah. But it, it's it's a really really hot one topic. It's big. It's very big in North America, the uh, continent we live in. So. Stay tuned and thank you very much for not getting us canceled, guys. If anything, I did. If anything, <laughs> I, I, I at least can wear it. I, I can appreciate that. Um, so we're going to do some nation Nations League review, guys, uh, some score predictions. First, let's start with Wales qualifying over Ukraine for the World Cup. Were there any surprises here, guys? Did you guys, anyone take in this match? Yeah, yeah, I, I watched it. No surprises whatsoever uh, for me because, bro, Gareth Bale, he's always there. He's always there for Wales. Anytime Wales needs this guy, this guy is there. He brought him to the Euros. Now he's bringing them to the World Cup. And they deserve it. I'm not going to be one of those guys like, oh, what's happening in Ukraine? So Ukraine has to go. No, nah, man, the better team goes. Whoever goes, whoever wins, they go. All right? And, and I don't really care about what a lot of people say that, oh, yeah, it should be Ukraine's year. And it's like... No, nah, fuck that. Wales made it. Wales is going. Wales, Wales deserves it. And and once again, uh, like I said from the beginning, Gareth Bale. Gareth motherfucking Bale. Like, he may not be playing for Real Madrid uh, anymore, but the, the guy is still a player. Like, there's still a player inside of him. He just can't play every week. You know what I mean? It's pro He's probably like a once every other week type of player, but he will probably produce. I, I will say, watching it, I felt like Ukraine was the better team. Um, simultaneous to that, I think Wales will do more damage at the World Cup if either one of these teams did. So I don't think anyone's super disappointed. Uh, no one was close on their predictions. Actually, and no one was close. Tiago predicted 3-1 Wales. He wants a point for that, but you got shit. So, uh, Tiago, are you with us? Stumper is here. If I was here last week, I would have said one nothing Wales for sure. For sure. <laughs> for sure, I would have said one nothing okay. Wales. And it would have been Gareth Bale once again. Even though it's an own goal, they counted as an own goal, but you know, I, he he he's, he was there. I don't want to say anything. This is actually an intervention. We know you're a workaholic. We know you're a workaholic, Barry. This is your intervention. You need to stop working and record and have fun. This is your intervention. Stubbers, Thiago has moved from his attic to the middle of the street in Oakville. He's now in the basement. He's relocating. When we get video, you guys will see the toxicity that this man brings. Thiago, did you watch Ukraine Wales? Uh, no, I, I only watched the second half, like about 20 minutes of the last 20 minutes. It looked like Ukraine dominated it all, but. Wales was just holding on. Rick, did you watch it? It was an own goal, I think. In the first half. I, 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 
I didn't watch it, but uh, um, from the games that I did watch, like the Spain uh, Czech Republic, at least I watched that game. Just just seeing the difference between the, the four teams, like Ukraine and Wales, seemed a lot like a, a closer a closer match, basically because they're they were more even. I would have been happy with either team winning type of thing. I was just uh, I brought Spain and Czech Republic because Spain controlled the game the whole time, and Czech Republic still ended up getting a good result. But because this is the segment that I'm sort of leading, you guys know there's got to be a curveball. Uh, in Nations League, we're each going to pick a team that impressed us, and we're each going to pick a team that disappointed us. And you can sort of explain why, or you can just hate, like Thiago will, and say Portugal has a lot to work on. I personally, I was most impressed with Holland in their, in their two matches. They had just won today 2-1. I feel like they look pretty impressive with a 4-1 drubbing against Belgium. I had Belgium winning that match, so impressive sorry, impressive result by Holland. And I feel like it's a tie for disappointing. I'm gonna go France and England, but I'm leaning, I'm leaning France just based on the competition that they faced. And I understand Denmark and Croatia are not nothing countries. I just think of France very highly. Um, so those are my two, and I will throw it to Perry. Impressed, disappointing. No, I'd go with Holland as well in terms of impress. Yeah. And uh, I'm not too disappointed in England because that's England. Like, they're just a bunch of fucking failures. You know what I mean? And look at the team that they've chosen. Southgate just chose, like, man, what a loser for a coach. Honestly, <laughs> there is so much talent coming out of England these days. And this guy continues to play a 3-5 fucking two. Or like a three, four, three. Like just I he's always playing with a back five just to accommodate um Harry Maguire. And Harry Maguire, all he ever does is just makes mistakes. Like, yes, he plays norm normally plays well for England, but the last game was just fucking hilarious. If you remember the little clip that I sent you guys in the morning. <laughs> you know, I hate Harry Maguire, man. And but like honestly, if England doesn't uh, end up winning something, a lot of it will be on uh, their manager, in my opinion, with the style of play that they go for with um, the sort of talent that they have. It's kind of a joke, but uh, most disappointing. Oh, man, that's hard. I wouldn't even say France, too, because they, they, they don't have their superstar player, but um, no, fuck it. England, even though I don't, even though I don't believe it, because they're just shit, anyways. Who's their superstar player before I moved to Thiago? La Bill. Everyone knows La Bill. Paul La Bill Pugba. All right. Oh my God. Yo, tell me, <laughs> tell me though, Thiago. I faded that. I faded Yo, Thiago, that one out. Only no, no, I... no, hold up, hold up, hold up. I want to know who runs that midfield currently right now. Who's and able Conte, to provide? Conte. Conte. Yo, who's... Conte. No, no. Is this Conte really able to provide the, the necessary balls to the fort? He, he's not a good maybe. passer. He he's hit, not he hit the crossbar. He can't control the tempo, nor can he control the game with his passing ability or his ability on the ball. All he ever Conte. does is a, he runs fucking a thousand kilometers during the game. Pogba, That's all he Pogba did. Does. That's all he Pogba fucking does. was. Conte yeah. hit the crossbar so nicely the other day, man. I was like, oh. Was oh my God! Play. What a trophy! But Spain, uh, trophy. sorry, France. I'm just saying, France, Con Conte said you can't well, hate uh, Conte France just because you love Pogba. Okay, well, no, yeah, France can because you understand they're two different style of players. Conte yeah, can't do what he can do, but you got, right? You and he, and Pogba Conte. can't do what Conte can do in the sense of just his defensive abilities. That's why they work so well together. So one second, guys. I baited Perry there. I know I baited him. I know I only baited him because of Thiago being on this pod now, and I knew he was going to be, oh, my God. I understand they're missing Pogba. I get that. I feel like no roster at this Nations League is fully healthy or in attendance, right? No. I know these are just friendlies. Uh, I still don't think France should be not beating Denmark at home, Barry. That's all my, I'm saying. And right? they lost. Did I say, did I say that they sh like they shouldn't be? Like they should be beating Denmark. We all know that. Or but, getting a point. But look at their midfield. There's absolutely no one that can carry the ball, make proper passes, find the find the forward. There's nobody. 
until he plays. And that's how their team is set up in that way. He is the one in that midfield that does all of that. And then Kante, uh, Tushimeni, these guys are the ones that are running around for him, right? Doing the defensive plays just to allow him to control the pace of the game. Stumpers were not on my pro account. Don't fucking hate it if this edit sucks. Perry was just saying that France sucks without Pogba or isn't as effective. And we were shooting to Thiago, who was going to tell us his most impressive team, his most disappointing. And I'm sure along the way, he's going to sh talk shit to Perry about Pogba. Go ahead, Thiago. My, the team I'm most impressed by was Denmark. They got a big win. They got two big wins, right? They, got, they, um, they beat um, France at home, I believe. Yeah, they're, uh, yeah, France was at home. They beat France 2-1. And the, the, the thing that impressed me was, like, not a lot of teams get that many chances, like, mm -hmm. big big chances in the game. And they had they had more big chances in the game than France in, in the box, which was impressive. And then um, they beat Austria 2-1. So to be in a group, to be in a group with Croatia and France and right now be leading after two games is pretty big for Denmark. So we can see that they have, they're getting better as a team, right, overall. And then my team that I thought, like, for me, that wasn't as a that was impressed with at all. That I actually thought I was going to do much better was England. One reason was in a group when you were in a group where you have Italy and Germany, you have to at least get that win or even a draw against hung or Hungary, right? Like for you to lose to that game and then have to play Germany and Italy right after, it's a big choke for them right there off the bat, right? So that's the team that was least. Impressed us with, uh, unless least impressed with was England. I will say, I think your answer probably is the best one with most impressive is that Denmark got six points on the road, like two two back to back road matches in Austria and France. That that is quite impressive. Um, I will say before I shoot it over to Rick, we'll look at each group and talk about teams that we haven't really talked about yet. Rick, most impressive, least impressive. It's also Denmark for the same reason Tiago said. Oh, you're such a bitch. Um, that was not your answer oh, before. Shut up. That, it, yeah, it was. It no. was. It was. Anyway. Denmark, <laughs> Denmark beating France alone, the little bit that I watched, which was after the 60th minute, whenever they Denmark ended up scoring both goals, they looked better than France. And that's pretty, that's pretty impressive, I feel. So I have to say Denmark. I didn't watch the Austria game, but so Denmark for me. And the one that I wasn't impressed, or the ones that I wasn't impressed with at all, is the whole group of uh, Germany, um, England, and Italy and Hungary, and Hungary, because I don't want Italy to fucking win that group. So I'm I'm oh. not impressed with any of them, <laughs> and I'll just say fuck all those people <clears throat> for letting Italy be in the lead after two games. There. What do you have against Italy? Oh, shut up, Tiago. Report. Sorry, uh, he's, he's, what do you think? Yeah. <laughs> Italy. <laughs> what, do have, what, what, what do you have against Pogba? What do you have against fucking Portugal? I don't think Pogba's that. I think Pogba's good, was good, but I think he's going downhill slowly. And what I have against Portugal, I have nothing against Portugal. I, I only, I only criticize teams that have won the World Cup, so that's all I can say. I will, I will say, <laughs> Italy showing up with like an under eighteen club roster and getting four points in two matches is fucking bananas. It is bananas, and credit to them. I know we're rebuilding like, stage, man. Rebuilding. I'm well. I'm yeah. fucking complimenting them. No, I'm, no, I know. I'm saying. I'm saying. I'm saying that. That's what they 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 have to do it now because if they keep waiting and keeping these like giving these older guys chances, it's never gonna start. So I guess right now is the best chance. I was. I was. I was just uh, agreeing with you that saying yeah, like it's a good thing that they're doing that now. Well, yeah, because Diago. Uh, fuck. I don't think that they're invited to the World Cup. I'm not, I'm not sure. We, we got to check that. We, we got we to gotta go to the tape. I don't think Italy got to the World Cup. We got to check them. Um, so, yeah, Denmark leading after two games. Austria being second. France third. Croatia is really, really, has not really impressed me. And I know they're an older team, but they, they seem a little dead. Anybody got any opinion on that with Croatia? You guys feel yeah, the same? I, I feel like the there's no in-between, like, there's no, I think they're way too young. Like, I know they have a good under 21 and under 17 team, but there's no in between right now. All the guys are like super old, and then the other guys are too young. So, I think now it's going to start like after this World Cup, you're going to start seeing a lot more young guys come in. And I think the first game, if I, I'm not sure if, I was, if I'm wrong, but 
The first game against Austria, uh, Modric didn't play at all. Fair enough. Uh, Portugal with and four Austria points. Austria won that, right? Austria, nothing, yeah. Austria yeah. won that. And who's their manager? Ralph Ragnick. Look at that. Ralphie. Ralphie goes over there, wins a game. He couldn't win the game here at United. I was going to say. <laughs> it was fucking amazing, yo. It, it just kind of proves to show that, like, we also have players that were just not willing to do exactly what he wanted. Like, um, the Austrian players are learning how to play his way, you know, with the high pressing. And um, y- y- you watch United games every single fucking weekend. Nobody was pressing. Nobody was pressing. So, so he's not a bad coach. A lot of people diss him for the job he did. A lot of the blame goes on the players, man. Anybody that blames an interim manager, Rick, is that not one of the most ignorant things? Is blaming interim yeah. managers are so fucking stupid because they're picking up piles of shit as they walk in the door, right? Like, I don't see how people hate on that, right, Perry? Every interim manager except for Lampard, you shit. Oh, Lampard, the guy who... Oh, oh no, wait, you know, Lampard, he's not even interim anymore. You guys got him for full? You're definitely going down. And he season. saved us, baby. No, you're going down next season for sure. Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, <laughs> group A2. Wait a second. Portugal is in first place. Like, I, I remember after the first match, Thiago said Portugal had a lot to work on. Portugal sitting at top with four four points is quite impressive. Well on them, right? Czech Republic being second, I think, is a little bit surprising. Spain being third. Switzerland with a goose egg and a minus five. Tiago, how do you, how are you feeling? Everyone needs some work, eh? I think, uh, yeah. I, for me, I in that group, I think the best, the better team I've seen overall in that group, like play wise, is Spain. The team that I, that I feel with Czechs. Yeah, I feel like they're the they're the best team overall. Like uh, Czech beat Swiss too, but and one Portugal. thing too is like no, I think the best the best team in that group I think is is Spain. Yeah, yeah, that's why they tied Czechs. Yeah, I could see yeah, that. Yeah, it Portugal. happens. But uh, I feel once they get Pedri back, uh, and Fati starts playing and their best center back, he comes back. I think next game, Eric Garcia. I think for me, I, I'm not hating on Portugal. I'm just saying I, I think Spain's a better team. I think Spain tops that group. At they, the end they, of it. They got a lot to work on. Before I go to Perry, Rick, what are your thoughts so far on A2? Well, Spain is obviously the best team in that, in that group, though. That's why like, they tied the Czech uh, Republic, guys. I keep fucking but, on y'all. Shit. But, Yo, but France lost to Denmark, right? But, so. but what, what Spain lacks is not fucking Pedri. Like, Gavi did a fucking amazing job for Spain. Uh, what Spain lacks is a fucking striker that can finish the ball because they don't have that. They, they, they lack somebody taller in the in – the, in the box so they could header balls and corners and stuff like that because that, I think they had a bunch of corners against Czech Republic and all they did was do, doing short corners. They never put it in the box. So Spain like that. For Portugal, all I got to say is be careful because Portugal has so much talent um, in every single position except center back. And once they get it all together, because they don't have it all together yet, once they get it all together, they will be like Spain. They will be like Italy's of the past and France like the past. They just have to have that, that right that right combination of players. That's and right. that, that was a delusional yeah. comment, man. Holy <laughs> smoke. Trust me. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> nah, let's every, every position? In the, in, I just have a question for you. In defensive mid, you guys have that position on lock? You have, you have yeah. Danilo, who plays for PSG. He's trash. You have Ronaldo Sanchez, who, who can't play three games consecutive. Ronaldo Sanchez is attacking midfield, mostly. Well, we he have, plays we mostly... Have, we have, we have Palinha, William scored the other day, and we have Danilo, which is supposed to be there, but he's playing center back because we have. Bro, no you guys are depending on those three apparently. guys. I feel bad. Uh, oh my god. But, but we, but we don't, we don't need, we don't need a center defensive midfielder to be honest. We have. You do if, you're, if, you're, if, can... you're, if your center backs are not as good. If that's a position that you guys rely on a lot, no, and I, I, I would trust, I would trust Danilo and Palinha. No problem. This always proves my point. Like Stumpers, this is the truth. For some reason. I can be the biggest hater in sports. I hate a lot of things. There's no hate bigger than Tiago's for Portugal. It's incredible. No, it's not that. I, I just, I'm I, telling you, Perry, if these motherfuckers somehow win a World Cup, you and I, we're getting you a Portugal jersey. We're egging this man. We're egging every house in Oakville till we find this. I, 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 I laugh. The thing, I don't hate. I, I just, I speak truth when I hear delusional talk. Like, like you know, I hear the, the every position is packed. 
when you when you when you talk when you when you hear things like that, it's it's kind of it's crazy. Like defense is not unlocked at oh. all. The defensive mid's not unlocked. Oh. You have you guys uh, the, you guys still you guys are still I, holding I tight said, onto a thirty seven year old striker. Listen, listen. I I said I said everything but center backs. That's what I said. We have yeah. Pepe, which is fucking thirty eight, and Ruben Diaz, which hopefully comes back. Hopefully they stay healthy and everything is okay. But right backs, we have two to three options or four maybe. Left back, we have Nuno Menj and Rafael Guerrero. That's two amazing options that and Brazil Cello wishes they had right can, now. Can, can I add something, though? Can I add something? No, wait, 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 wait. You don't get to cut them off. You, you literally throw shade then, at Portugal for five minutes. Let the guy speak. Then, okay, okay. And uh, then, once it's done, and then, let's talk. And then, and then we have, like, I would say five options for midfield. They just have to mesh together. And, like, seven for attacking. Uh-uh. With, no. with Ronaldo on the bench. No, 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 no. Listen. That's the part where you fucked up right there, all right? I, I've been riding with you this whole time, Rick. One of those five options in midfield, you know one of those five options in midfield is what is the main reason as to why you but, guys can't even string any fucking he, passes together. You he, know, one of those guys. He actually played attacking left. midfielder I've ever seen in my life. Can, let, can I, uh, let me just Fernandez. add something? Bruno Fernandez, really? Yo, if the moment your coach puts him to the bench and hardly plays him is when you're actually going to see you guys play a little bit better. Honestly. Yeah. That guy, he plays football. Like the shit is on fire. Like it's absolutely fucking crazy. Fuck that shit. You guys need to sit him, get Neves in there, get like Moutinho in there, you know, like my trusted guys, you know what I mean? They'll hold on to that ball. Yo, uh, have Bernardo play centrally as well. You know, um, have that young kid. What's his name? Uh, Liao. We love this. Liao is, is a pod favorite. Liao's Yo, a pod favorite. He's a monster. He's hey. a fucking monster. Like, I can even see him being a striker. Like, they, one know. day they could put him at a number nine. Like, I, I can see that, right? Not Portugal, but like AC Milan. Um, honestly, sit Bruno Fernandez's ass down, yo. That's all I got to say. <laughs> if Portugal I, wants to succeed. I, I think he had a really good game, but uh, in the second game, at least, against. Swiss. Ricardo, yeah. listen, Ricardo, I appreciate your Portuguese love. It was great. Perry, I appreciate you being consistent. It's your brand. Tiago, <laughs> take us home with your consistent hate. Tell us. What so you're uh, it's not because it's hate. I'm just saying for me, like defensively, like when people like when they, they say defensive, we, we got it on lock on the wings. Cancelo, Guerrero, the lot. Um, Mendes, those guys, are all, those, all those guys. You- these are all guys that are really good on the wing, attacking. Defensively, the trash. I've watched uh, – Mendes got exposed badly against Real Madrid. Uh, Cancelo got uh, exposed badly on the wings many times. He, that's why Juventus sold them. They clearly said that they were letting him go because they wanted someone defensively back there, right? They're, they're, scoring is great, but when you can't defend – when you play a team that has a good guy on the wing there, he's going to expose you. Uh, Guerrero's really good attack, and a lot's – pretty good on attack but defensively they're both weak all those guys are weak defensively when you play a team with Mbappe coming at you on the wing or Vinicius Jr. on the wing I, I those guys are going to get exposed bad what a and fucking cliff oh my god I'm gonna move. he just fucking went Mbappe to Vinny Perry yeah yeah that's what I'm saying yo this guy dropped hey, Vinny hey, who, 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 won, who won the Champions League who won the Champions League Benzema <laughs> the fucking who, who won the best winner. who won the best young player of the world no, uh, Vinicius yeah. Jr. No, he didn't, did he? Yeah, he did. He won the best young player of the world. He just won it. So, check, so, check, so, Champions League, like check, check Champions League Instagram, bro. Yo, don't promote <laughs> get on this podcast. <laughs> uh, so we, we move on to A3. Honestly, speaking of what Portugal has become, like the new Man U thing since fucking uh, November is four months away. It's fucking, it's really, really a bad drug. Uh, A3, Italy being the like impressive Four points. Hungary with three. Germany with two. England with one. We've t- we've talked at length about England so far, so let's not kick a horse while it's down. Germany, Perry, the, the, yeah. are they surprising to you with two draws? Like it, I felt like they were a team in transition, but watching and listening to the British commentators on Monday was it yesterday or Tuesday? Yeah. It was yesterday. Um, sounds like no, Germany they're... to be to be feared. But 100%, they are a team in transition, though, currently, right now. Like, obviously, now they got a new coach in Hansi Flick. 
Um, a lot more younger players uh, have been blooded into the team. And uh, right now he's just trying to, you know, set up that system, uh, have these young guys know what they're supposed to do and, and grow within it. So you're not really going to see Germany, um, you know, be like that German machine that we know. But uh, they, they will be one of those teams that always will have that aura around them that helps them you know, in games, especially against like smaller nations, it'll be easy for them to beat smaller nations and get those wins when they need it. But against top nations, it'll probably be like a tie or they might, you know, lose or um, if they do win, it's going to be like something like tight and, and crazy. You know what I mean? What do you, what do you think of Germany so far? Jaya? Like this, new, it's sort of a new look, right? Oh, before you, before you speak, Tiago, how the fuck is Thomas Mueller 32 years old? That was like the weirdest thing to me. Is 30, 32. Feels that like seems he like, like he's like, been around forever, man. Like, yeah, he's 40 years old. Yeah. Fuck, yeah. man. I was like, that guy's younger than me. This is my fucking dad. Anyway, uh, <laughs> what do you think yeah. of this Germany? No, Germany? Germany, I think they look good in both games. Both games, they look like they dominated early, but they kind of kind of settled in the second half a little bit, but they have a lot of good young guys to look forward to. So I, I, I think by the World Cup, I think if they play quite a few more games, they'll mesh better together. They haven't, gave, they haven't given like Adeyemi and some of those younger guys too much of a chance, but they should. This is the chance right now before the World Cup, right? You don't want to put all these guys in the fire during the World Cup. So I think Germany is going to be one of the top dogs again. It's like they're kind of their, they didn't even need a full rebuilding, but it's like a partial rebuild. Just like Netherlands did, but you, as you see now, Netherlands oh, no, are back. No, no, N- Netherlands. I feel like did. they went to a full. No, yeah, they went. No, I they said it wasn't did. like Netherlands. Yeah. Netherlands did a full rebuild. Germany didn't have to. Germany didn't have to. They just did like a partial fix here, there, but it's a little bit of a tiny bit of a rebuild. Rick, are you surprised? Are you surprised at Germany how they look? I know, I know, you're in the middle of eating a nata. What do you feel? Um, why would I be surprised with a team that beat Brazil seven one? True, uh, true. And, uh, you know what's <laughs> fucked? I almost forgot it. Like, they beat him 7 1 a couple of years ago. True, true, true. Um, no, but, uh, but, uh, but, uh, but they, they played against England. They should have won that game. That, I don't think that was a penalty on, on Kane. Oh, you, okay. Tell me why. He, he was offside. Is that the rule? That, that, that's, that's the first thing. Is and that then I, he, barely, he barely fucking touched them. I don't know who the defender was, but he barely touched them. So I'm going to ask I'm gonna ask the guy who played in CSPL, but before I do, Ricardo, that if you tell me that that was not an exchange of legs, that is 100% a penalty. Is it a rule, though, Tiago, that the guy needs to be onside? Does the guy need to be onside for it to be a legit penalty or no? Well, when they go, like, if – when they look back, because uh, now they don't call offside until the play is done. As you see, remember, like, even in the Real Madrid game, they took longer, so they, they let it go because they have VAR now, so they can just recheck it. But I'm sure, I'm surprised they didn't recheck and, and call it offside. They did. they did not check did. the offside, Rick. That's what Perry and I were saying. Oh, in the yeah, yeah. They just that's the only had, reason. That's the only reason that I thought it shouldn't be a goal was the offside. The foul was a foul. It was a clear foul, but it was offside. But the one thing I'm not surprised about, the one thing I'm not surprised about Germany is that they have four World Cups, which is four more than Portugal, right? So, yeah, they went into they went into the favelas and smoked them. I, I will say one thing about Germany that's interesting is. Any team that tries to do a set piece against Germany feels like you lose every ball in the box. And it's been like that since, like, the beginning of time. And I felt like that with England. They tried to put shit in the box, and Rudiger would clear everything forward. Rick, 7-1, eh? Fuck, I got to look that. I got to watch the video. Uh, Yo, we will the talk eighth, about it's eight. It's the eighth today, isn't it? 7-1? <laughs> 7-1? It's the eighth. It's the eighth today, too. Oh, July, July 1st will remind him again. Yo, you can you you can you can hold on to that as much you can hold on to that as much as you want, but at the end of the day, we're five time champions and you guys are still holding on to a thirty eight years old, a thirty eight year old to win you guys a World Cup. I'm sorry, man. It sucks. Yo, this, I know. Guy, this guy was in his diapers the last time they won. What is he talking about? He didn't 2000, 2002, he, buddy. He, he, 2002, he, he, we were still in diapers. We were still wearing diapers. We were in high school with you, clown. We were in high school. We saw you in diapers. Walking Winning right championships, bro. Fight. You're fighting. Hey, hey, guys, 19 championships. That's all I got to say, 19 championships. <laughs> right. Uh, 
So we'll, we'll quickly touch on A4 before we give Tia honest. I, I regret giving him like a second of this because he's going to talk so much shit. Uh, A4, <laughs> Holland having six points. Belgium getting their fucking throat stepped on in Belgium, bouncing back today. Poland getting three. Wales being, being at the bottom of the group. Anything to take away from Belgium here, Rick? Because Holland, we, we've already said, the pay, they look sharp. I do believe, I though, that it's not a sports gambling pod. But I do believe a lot of people are jumping to bet Holland right now, and all the value is gone. Go on. Holland, Holland and Portugal are uh, tied for odds for favorites to win this competition right now. But Wait, for Belgium, they- yeah. Okay. But for for Belgium, like I was about to like throw them, throw so much shade at them after they lost the Netherlands. But then I watched today's game, and they demolished uh, Poland. They they came back and they just couldn't stop scoring. So. Maybe they just had a bad game against Netherlands, I, w- I would say. But, like, their defense looked very, very weak that first game. I don't know that they're very good. I feel like Thiago and Perry are texting each other right now. But I don't know if they're very good. I will say one thing, Rick, is I was still surprised that KDB played because I had my South American correspondent told me KDB wasn't going to play this because these are just friendlies and no one cares. He looked pretty fucking good today, no, Rick? Oh, yeah, he made me some money. Barry, are you are you more of a fan of KDB on Belgium than you are on City or no? Still out on no, I think I think it's shittier in Belgium. <laughs> I think it's shittier in Belgium, but uh, compared to like his city form, what he shows at City compared to Belgium, yeah, you, you, you more of a fan of the City one, right? Because he just does some crazy shit. But for Belgium, sometimes I feel like he's just he, he's suspect. Is Lukaku is Lukaku a starter on this roster? You think come World Cup time or no? Where is everyone? What everyone's feeling? I'll start with you, Barry. Lukaku is a dead striker, man. He's is he a just, striker for this team though? Which the Belgium team? Yeah. Who, please tell me who they have. Who else do they have? They don't have too they much. Have? They have the the guys that are coming up. They have a lot of good young guys up forward, but no one that Bro. stands out like too too much. No, I'm only saying who else do they have because they don't have anybody. So he's going to play. It's not like he's playing out of talent, right? Because of talent, because he's um, literally like one of the best players in the world or something like that. Only this guy's, yo, Lukaku's been awful this whole season. Like he's had his chances and when he's played, he's just been poor. The guy doesn't deserve to be the starter, but who do they have? He should run. He should run back to Italy. Run back to Inter. Run. Back. That's, that's that's a rumor right now. It's tough though because like when he was at Inter, Conte was his manager. Right. Conte's not there. There's a new manager, right? And the new manager may not play to his strengths or anything like that. You 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 never know, right? And then he's I, gonna end up flopping again. <laughs> so he's gonna he's gonna go to Chelsea, flop, and then come to Inter and flop. Imagine that as a player. What would that do to your confidence? Oh, his his career's cooked at that point. Nope. No. Uh, yeah, I I think they should switch. Uh, give Abraham back to Chelsea and give uh, Lukaku to Roma. That's what I think. I think Lukaku under Mourinho would be a little bit better. He'd probably get his career back. And Abraham's a stud of a player, so I'm sure he'll work out in England. No, I if I'm him, I stay in Italy. Exactly. I was about to say that. I, I was about to say, I feel like Italy was a good change of pace for Tammy. No, no, Thiago? Tammy? Yeah, yeah he's, he, I, I don't think he's going anywhere. I think they want to keep him. But no, what I was going to say was Lukaku didn't look too good this year at all. Like, he looked horrible. But if you look at his stats, like, for Belgium, when he plays for Belgium, even when he's off for club, he kills him, man. Like, I, I was checking his last, like, um, eight games for Belgium. He scored, including the, he scored against Italy in the Euro Cup. He's he scored against France a little while ago. He's been scoring every game for Belgium, so I they're probably gonna start him come World Cup time because the other guys are too young. There's really good players there that you could use, you could give a chance, but it might be too early. True. Dumb, dumb, yeah. question, by, dumb question by the host. Who 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 else do they have? And I don't even know if the man I, did Lukaku play today. By no, chance? no, 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 right? Okay. And they end up scoring six without him. So, <laughs> I don't know, man. Lukaku is shit, bro. All I got to say is he better not end up back at Everton. Uh, this is the the poisonous portion of our, our show, Stumpers. We got Tiago coming in with some rumors. Uh, he'll probably start a few rumors. If he's going to watch Fop Mob and 
let us know. Uh, let us have it, Tiago. No, the one that I was going to talk about, it was I, from what I read, it was almost done deal. But now, uh, Ricardo talked about Liverpool. And I went to go look into it, and it was uh, it's true. Like nothing's one hundred percent, but it was look. It looked like Darren Nunes was going to Man U. And what, what I read, because my buddy had told me, so I looked at a few different sites, and they all said the same thing. Manu had offered 55 million pounds, which is 64 million euros, plus a player. And the player was going to be <laughs> – you like that, eh? I, did, I, I like the, the conversion. I, I, I conversion, I did it. I was going to ask. So it was, that, it was the money plus a player, and then the player was supposed to be either Cavani or Andres Pereira. Andres no, Pereira, that, that's – It was actually Mar uh, Marcial that they're going to offer up. But Benfica said no, because they can't even afford his wages too, because his wages are like 200 a week or something like that, right? Um, but Benfica, you know, you know you, Rick, Rick, you know, Benfica's broke. That, they, that, they can't be that, doing that. That's, that's, why, that's why they're trying to make some money off Darwin. But that, that's what they did with, uh, when they sold Ruben Diaz to City, they took uh, Otamendi back. Right. And then, yeah. So that's a part of the, and then the other one was Liverpool offered was 80 million euros but 20 in add-on so it adds up to 100 but i don't i don't know if that's true man i don't see them paying 100 million dollars for that guy like i don't think anybody gets 100 million right now so this is your segment tiago but i want you to lead because i i don't really have a crazy opinion on darwin nunez what's the best fit for him and why is it insane that he's not worth x amount and We'll go round table. We'll go Tiago, Perry, Rick. Start with Tiago. I, I think best fit for him would go to, I think would go to Man U because mm. on, yeah, me too. I think Liverpool right now, there could be a chance that if he plays a bad game, he could be, if he plays a few bad games, he could lose his spot real quick or, or he might not even start right away because club wants to go with the guys who have more experience. I think Man U, you get a fresh start and, and, they're going to let you prove yourself there, right? So I think that's – Manu is the best spot for him. Agreed. Perry? I pray to God he doesn't come. Fuck that shit, man. I've seen this guy. Uh-uh. I'm not a fan of him. Not a fan of him at all. I think his link-up play sucks. I think it's shit at holding the ball. The guy has, what, less than, um, what, nine passes a fucking game that he actually completes? Like, that's kind of crazy, man. Nah, you got to offer me more. I don't care. You are a striker. I need more because you can end up being like Lukaku and fuck up the um, the play almost every single time the ball comes to your feet. I don't need a striker like that. I need a striker that can hold on to that ball, make the right passes, and keep the fucking play moving. So, no. Best place? Liverpool. Because of their style of play, right? They can have their wingers run with the ball. He just runs into the box and then He's there for headers or whatever sort of mistakes in terms of uh, Salah shot, goalie saves it. Go to Liverpool, bro. Go to Liverpool. Ricardo. Yeah, it's, it's definitely Liverpool. Um, well, wait, wait, wait. So I, I have to chirp you because I've known you the longest. Why yeah. the fuck would it be Liverpool? Where is – who is he starting over on Liverpool? Jota, Diaz? He, I, I, I just – I feel like Klopp, everybody that's played for Klopp has worked out and – this is a club type player. It's like a Salah. It's like a Mane. Mane is leaving, right? So he'll even if he doesn't replace Jota or Diaz right now, he's a good player to come off the bench, just like Firmino did for a couple of years. But they're gonna pay that amount of money for somebody that comes off the bench. It's kind of weird. But exactly. yo, they don't even have a number nine though. If you really think about it, they don't really have a number yeah. nine. So he's gonna play the number nine role. Right, and he is what, like six three, I think, something like that. Six between the, six and six three. The one thing about Darwin that I could tell you is compared a lot to a mix of the other two Uruguay players, the Suarez and Cavani. He's like compared to, in between them, a little bit yeah. taller. He just plays in Perry. If Perry didn't want him, he doesn't want him now because it's Cavani. It's not a good. Don't do those comparisons. No, not even just Cavani, yo. Suarez the most, yo. Fuck that guy. I yo, really Cavani in the prime. Guy. You guys got him at the end of his career, man. If you got him in the prime, no, 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 no. no. That's not thought. about it. That's not why I dislike Cavani. I dislike Cavani because this guy was choosing when he was gonna play, when he wasn't gonna play. Like always faking these sort of fucking injuries when we needed him the most. And he's out like there Pogba. sitting for the longest time. No, he's actually injured though, dumbass. Anyways, fucking 
Boom. That's yeah. what we call it. <laughs> yeah. I don't need I don't need Cavani. I don't need um Nunez. I don't need no Uruguayans. Nope. So we got we got one more transfer. It's I, I think it's just more a vote thing, and then we're gonna shoot it to a player for player thing before we close this off. It is so go. Yeah, so basically, like what I I said, like let's pick the team who who we think they should go. So the three guys were Lewandowski, Lukaku, and Mane, because none of it is none of it's figured out yet, right? So let's start with Lewandowski. We can start with maybe you, Perry, and then we'll go around. Who the fuck are you starting with me for? Because you're below me in the screen. What about Lewa? What about Lewa? Huh? No, I said, like, where do you think, where do you think, where where do you think Lewandowski should end up? Because he he said he wants to leave Bayern Munich. Where do you think is the best fit for him? Best fit for him? Best fit for him is at United. Give me Lewa. I want two strikers (laughs) combination of 72 years old. Like, I need that at my club, man. (laughs) Fuck. Yo, Cristiano can play once a week. Lewa can play once a week. They're both scoring 30-plus goals a season. We're going to win the Premier League next year. Come on, man. That, give me that. No, but on a real, though, best would be, like, Barcelona at this moment, just like everyone else is saying, because they don't necessarily have that number nine, right? Um, so he would be the best fit. And then Aubameyang can play, um, can come off the bench. I would say Barca. Rick. I uh after hearing Perry said that I actually think Lewandowski would be an amazing fit for United. I'm not gonna lie. But uh but I think I think it's all set in stone for Barcelona, no? no it's pretty much I think he he wants to go there. He uh, said clearly he wants to go to Barcelona. I hate to be yeah. that guy. I feel like it was all set in stone for Mbappe to go to Real too, right? Like uh, in the end, these things move. Yeah. These are these are fucking really, really uh I guess stubborn men that a lot of money is being thrown at them, but yeah, that is the best fit. I, I think I think he stays a buyer. I, I think the Germans hold no. him hostage, man. Yeah, I think they hold so, him. Uh, yeah, I, I think. think yeah, I think that Barcelona is gonna take him, and I think that's a perfect move for him, man, because he has so much. Like, he's a finisher, and he has Pedri, Fati, uh, Fernand Torres, Gavi, all those guys who are wicked in passing. They could feed him. He, that guy could hit like 40 goals in a year there, especially with all that young talent around him, just setting him up like crazy. I think it'll, it'll be a good uh, move for him. And I think he ends up in Barca. La Liga would be fire. La Liga, like Barca, El Clasico would be back to being El Clasico. I, yeah, I, do, think, I do think Lewandowski is going to pick the best place for him because he probably feels like he hasn't won a Ballon d'Or yet because he plays in Germany. Everybody yeah. else that's won a Ballon d'Or has, won, has been in other leagues. Yeah, that's that's valid. Completely valid. Um, Perry, we're not going to torture you and give us more than one player for player, but give Tiago a play, this player or this player. Give him the one that we were talking about when he was going to the middle of the street. Do you remember? <laughs> oh, yeah. Neymar or Messi? Now, Neymar. No, yeah. Now, Neymar or Messi. Now, here's the thing. Whatever your answer is going to be, there's a potential that you'd be fucking kicked out of Brazil. You won't be considered a citizen no more. You're going to be a fucking <laughs> little traitor. You're so, Canadian. You're Canadian. Yeah, you're Canadian. You're going to be Canadian from now on. You fake Are you Brazil. talking about, like, what is, t- who I, what I take right now currently? No, no, no. Just in general, Neymar or Messi. Just in general. No, but like I'm saying, like if I if I had to take pick okay. one of them for my team right now, like to play right now on my team. I'm well, not yeah. support five goals against Estonia. Hello. No, but I'm I'm asking the question: Is it like to, for me to play them right now? Right? Not like career wise. Two both. No, however you want to look. Okay, at career it. wise, obviously Messi, 100 percent career career wise. I'm going no Messi, but right now no World Cup though, no World Cup. Yeah, neither and have. Hold up. As but, a Brazilian, yeah. you're gonna choose an Argentinian. Uh, career wise, uh, yeah, career wise, Messi's better, obviously. But right now, I, w- I would pick Neymar. Right now, like I feel like well, I watched a lot of games in when Neymar was gone from PSG, and they were they they won a few games, but they lost quite a bit of few games without him, and they were a mess without him. And then he came back, and he led. He almost led, like he set up both goals, or or yeah, all the goals 
against Real Madrid. Like, he did most of the work. Mbappe obviously scored, but he set up the, the plays. Right now, I would take Neymar over Messi, but overall, career-wise, Messi. So, background to this Stumpers is Thiago's got this weird, weird hate train for Neymar. And it actually is one of Perry's most favorite Brazilian players. I think definitely favorite current Brazilian player. And I hate Neymar, but I, I like him now more because Thiago hates on him and he's raising his hand. He never does this. Go ahead. No, I, I don't hate on him. I just think that Neymar, like, um, he's I, know he's, I know he scores a lot for Brazilian stuff, but for me, like, I don't care about the personal, like, let's say he ends, he ends the, um, his career with like the most goals in, in, um, which, for, the which you will. for the, for the Brazilian national team. Yeah. He'll, which you will. but he doesn't win a world cup. I don't care. I don't care about those stats because they do nothing. Those goals have done nothing, you know, like for the Copa America, we won without him. I feel like we're better with him, obviously, but if, if he ends his career with no world cup, I, I, I'm not going to keep bringing him up in conversation because there's no point. No, Yo, did, Pele, did Pele win the World Cup by himself? Yeah. Or did he have teammates yeah, but he, on his but team he that, has, were, even, that he, were even he, better than him? He has because a team. not like he's even, 17 years old. He came and he was like he has a the team. superstar player, the best player in the world. That's fucking bullshit. Everyone even, knows that. Even, even Ronaldinho, Ronaldo, they, they, it was a team. That was a team effort by Brazil that won the World Cup. Those are the best... They probably had like five of the best players in the world. Brazil. Yeah, but that yeah. could the, but that could be that could work play. against you. That like can work Neymar. against you, right? Like PSG. Sure. But they, they work, but they did it. But when you're when you're that good and you can make it mesh together, it's there's no but question they, asked. And and you can't, and a lot of guys say, oh, that, that 2002 the team was stacked. That's the only reason they won. Ronaldo, Ronaldo and Ronaldinho and, and Rivaldo, they were the best in the world at that time. Separately, they were the best. That's my, what that's my, what exactly what Ricardo just said. But but to make it but work my, together, like Mbappe, Neymar, and Messi, they, they were a mess this year. So, so it's, it's hard to make it work. No, it's, Yo, it's different with, with nations, in my opinion. I feel like if a nation has so many top players, they can come together easier because the whole goal is to win it for the nation, right? The whole goal is to win it for the nation. So they'll put all their ego aside and, and fucking and, and, and fucking merc shit. Who, who the hell has Neymar had since he's been on the national yeah, team? I know, I know. But shit. Right now, so, right now he's, was, right now he's in his what? prime. In the talent, talent-wise, way better than fucking Pele. Way yeah, better right. than any man that has ever played in, in uh, Brazil uh, football. No way. So ne Neymar is not in his prime. He, he's contemplating going to fucking MLS in a couple of years. And he's contemplating retiring thing. But my question to Tiago is, yeah, that's you, think all Neymar, but you think Neymar will probably win a World Cup if like Vinicius, if he came around the same age as Vinicius? Like if he actually had a Vinicius Jr. around him for like 10, 15 years. Bro, he's, you know he's 30 right now. He's 30 right now. He has... Vinicius Jr., Rodrigo, Anthony, Rafinha, all those guys to help him out. Casimiro, Fabinho, all those guys, Paqueta, Bruno Gamarais. Together right now, nobody, he can win. He has, he has, yeah, and they're nobody. They're all on they're top teams. They're, yeah. they yeah, they're, they're, yeah. they're all on top teams, Thiago. But remember, all those Portuguese uh, right backs and left backs were on top teams and you made fun of I them. I know, but no, so I didn't make fun of them. I said they're good. Compared I said to they're very, two teams. I said, I said they're very good attacking but defensively they're not too good but they're very good attacking i would take them an attacking team but you have to have really good center backs to have guys like that this brazil team is nowhere close to those brazil yeah but no team is no team like france was not this france is nowhere as near as good as the 98 but they'll still beat brazil right now so what they, i don't think so we'll they'll see but I, I think ass, i think neymar has a, a lot of talent with him right now in every position we have a lot of talent he 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 combined he keeps it together he meshes together i never said talk bad about him but i said i don't want to i'm not going to praise a guy for mm -hmm. you know not winning a world cup respect uh stuff. i hope you guys enjoy this episode of foot stuff i am not on my pro account hence why we are wrapping this up when we do but we're going to argue we are taking the week off next week i'm off ricardo is off we're taking a vacation together to portugal we're smuggling stuff through his dog uh harry and tiago are going to stay here miserable working like workaholics uh we will see you guys in two weeks stuppers take it easy uh like subscribe comment on instagram youtube spotify listen to that shit buy xl shirts love all three of you guys but i hate you guys more cheers brazil sucks